fine. Okay, Brittany is um, one of our people in the network, so I'm gonna let her in if you yeah. don't mind. I'll put a little music on to keep you company. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to take my face off since we probably don't need to see my beer hat when people start coming in. There we go. You're like a weird shadowy figure. Okay. No, I don't know why I'm struggling so much to get to be seen. I think it might be the backlight. There we go. That's better. Hello, Brittany. Hey. How are you? Just enjoying the, enjoying the tunes. Yeah. Joel's got some, Joel's got some rocking tunes. You must like the, the golden, the golden age, the 50s, 60s. Uh, I enjoy soul and funk and yeah. I was going to make a joke about, well, I mean, he did live through that, but that wasn't, <laughs> yeah, no, not quite. That, that wasn't a very nice joke to think about making. So where or maybe born then? Yeah. I was born in 66. 66. Yeah, born in 66. There you go. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, do like, I do like some 80s music. I was not born in the 80s, but I do. Okay, Jason is here. I'm letting him. All right, in. good. And Delia's here. I'm letting her. What's this? Uh, what's this one about? This is about uh, establishing e-commerce. Super. This would be great. Hold on. Oh, Jason. You're on mute. Um, let me turn my music off here. Hello, everyone. How Hello. are you? Hi. It's it's nice to see you. Well, it's nice to be seen. I have, um, as we're waiting for the rest of our guests to get here, um, I have our your website up and because I'll use it at one point. I'll share it just so that people know who you are and how. Is there a page besides the home page that you'd like for me to be on when I share a screen for that? Um, yeah, it's a good landing spot because then depending on what the business type is and what they're interested in, they can kind of pick and choose where they would prefer to go. And we're talking about e-commerce, so you could maybe select the e-commerce page. Um, okay, which would be... Thank you, Brittany. I w Brittany told me the top of my head's cut off. I, I will, <laughs> I'll, I'll sit back here once we get started. I'm just sitting up close at the moment. <laughs> I'm letting Burton in, Joel. Good. For the, uh, the payments, if you, Joel, if you went up to products and uh -huh. then payments. Okay. Probably right there would be good. Okay. Burton Kelso, how are you, my friend? Don't forget to unmute yourself. And then Joel, we're four minutes out, so can I start letting people in? Sure. Okay. I'm waiting for Pam to get on here, but. Okay. Hi, Delia. Hi there, how's it going? Good, feel like long time no talk. I know. Hey, Burton, <laughs> how are you, man? I'm doing good, can you hear me? Good, okay? good to see you in the flesh. Uh, good seeing you too, it's been a while. I know, a very long time. Hey, um, I have your website pulled up because I'll be sharing it when I introduce you or at some point during it. Is that other than the home page, is there any place you'd like for me to be on that website? Website. No, that's fine. You can be on the integral uh, okay. home page. I'm assuming right. that's the one you're at, correct? Yeah. Okay. Looks like the Millennium Falcon fell down. Yeah, let's see here. I'm waiting for Pam to get in here. And we've got about three minutes before we actually start. Welcome to our guests as you are 
rolling in. We're glad you. you're here. We're, as you just heard, waiting on one more guest and or speaker, and then we'll get started. Be sure to keep yourselves muted during a class just so we don't get a lot of feedback. Thank you. Yeah, we won't have time to take questions. This is a very fast paced 30 minutes. Um, you're welcome to put questions in there, and, but at the same time, I, I don't have time to read them and get into them. We've pretty much got all the information that we're going to cover already laid out. And what I would recommend is that um, you um, listen, learn, and connect with one of us afterwards for more information. All right, let's see. I like your background, Bill. Thank you. Um, Casey Sourcelink created that. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I created mine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, you did a screen share. I was, I was like, what the hell happened to my screen? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing a screen share. Okay. You're, you're seeing the Missouri Small Business Center's page, right? You're, yeah. You're on it. All right. I'm gonna keep that up for now. Um, all right, we'll give just a minute for the rest of our guests to get in here. Michelle? The whole Pam just got here, so I let okay. her in. There we go. That's great. It's getting concerned. Hello, Pam. Can you hear me? How about if I unmute and turn my video on? Now can you hear and see me? Uh, let's see. I know I can hear you. Let's see if I can see you. There you are. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. You good, are good. coming out with um, a book? Um, I actually have three books. One that's out and two more that are going to be out soon. So Can't wait to hear about them. <laughs> um, I, co -part I partnered with someone on a book that's out right now. And we're getting ready to do a bunch of push on it. And I'm like, she's like, put it on your website. And I'm like, okay. And then we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> um, Great. Uh, I have your website pulled up. Is there a page you'd prefer me to be on other than the home page? Um, you know, I did not uh, create a page for this audience, uh, oh, okay. which is what I might have done had I known this. Um, I, I'm always very, you know, audience centric. Um, so I, I think that's fine. That's fine. I just liked it so that people have a visual on sure. talking. Um, let me, we're going to get started here in just a second. Everybody should be able to see, I forget I'm sharing the screen and I'm popping all, when I start staring screen, I forget because I have this habit of doing my mouse like this while I'm looking at things and I forget that other people are watching that, that I'm not the only one that can see it. <laughs> a little distracting. Yes. <laughs> And I just do that. It's like a nervous habit while I'm sitting here thinking. And Rebecca was like, one day she was like, stop, the mouse is driving me nuts. <laughs> the cursor. Okay. Let me get my notes here and we'll get started. Good to see everybody. Just a reminder to the audience, we are recording this session. It will be online later in a library of all of the Better Together Tuesdays. And we won't have time for questions during this time. The goal is to give you enough information to know a little bit more than you did and where to go to find out more and who to connect with. So um, if everybody except my guests will keep their um, uh, mics on mute, that would be very helpful. And we will get started in three, two, 
Hello and welcome to Better Together Tuesdays. I'm your host, Joel Barrett, a business development consultant with the Missouri Small Business Development Center at UMKC. And together, we're going to make business simple, even in very complex times like right now. Uh, this webinar series is in response to the many questions that we receive on a daily basis from small business owners all across the Kansas City area and the Missouri region beyond. And many of those questions came, of course, as a result of the COVID-19 quarantine uh, shutdown, but they aren't limited to that. But during that time, we've definitely been a bit in crisis mode and we've dealt with a lot of small businesses. And so most of the uh, topics that I've chosen for Better Together Tuesdays have been some of the hot topics that we've received, especially during the COVID-19 time. However, they apply beyond that. Um, there's a quote by Shelley Seifert that I use each time. She's the CEO of First Bank in St. Louis. She said, surviving and thriving in a crisis is rarely a solo event. And so we want to do this together because we believe we're better together. So we're going to take this 30 minutes, going to divide it into three segments. The first part is focus, where we just kind of focus on the problem, the, the challenges. Then we go into innovate, which is how can we be doing things differently, and engage, which is where can we find out more. And each of those segments will be a different length of time because uh, it just depends on what's happening. So today we're going to talk about establishing e-commerce for your business. Uh, many businesses realized during all of this pandemic that suddenly they needed to convert to selling online in some kind of fashion. And we've all witnessed this, whether it was a restaurant or a retail store or any other kind of business where they start going, well, if I'm going to survive, I'm going to have to add this component if I didn't already have it or expand it. And uh, a lot of businesses discovered that they and their websites were not quite prepared for that. And we've dealt a lot with a lot of clients who have struggled with some of this. So that's what we're going to discuss today. All the ins and outs of e-commerce, security, suggestions, problems, solutions, etc. But I want to start by introducing my guests. And I have their website brought up, which is why I'm screen sharing with you. And uh, I'm going to start here with Pam Hausner. And it says, did I say your name right, Pam? Hausner. Okay, Hausner. I, I've always said Hausner, but then I started looking at it and I was like, maybe I've been saying that wrong all of my no, time. No. Okay, all right. So uh, she's with Big Vision Designs. And Pam, in just a sentence or two, tell us about you and your business. Well, I've been making websites for well over 20 years. I started in the mid 90s. Um, and I just did it more as a creative outlet, but uh, it grew into a business once my kids went to college and I needed to make money. Uh, so I've been doing, uh, working with branding, marketing, communications um, ever since. All right. Thank you, Pam. Thank you for being here. And folks, if you decide you want to contact Pam, it's bigvisiondesign.com and you'll see the contact button right up there and you can get in touch with her. I also want to uh, welcome... Let me find the, the site. Um, Jason Bosson. And uh, Jason, tell us a little bit about your business and yourself in a sentence or two. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Jason Bonson. work for Heartland Payment Systems here in the uh, Kansas City area. We uh, are a technology company, so helping uh, businesses of uh, all sizes uh, from you know very small to very large international companies uh, take payments uh, in a wide variety of fashions. And obviously discussing e-commerce today, there's numerous ways to do that and uh, you want to make sure you're doing it securely um, and at a very uh, hopefully a very good price so just trying to educate where I can on those on those points very good thank you Jason sorry I mispronounced your name there a bit That's Burton, all good. Burton Kelso um, I have your site up here tell us in a couple of sentences about who you are in your business please so my name is Burton Kelso I'm a technology service company by the name of integral um, our business consists of helping Homes and small businesses conquer all of their computer challenges. As far as e-commerce, we can help businesses um, just navigate their whole social media plan. As a speaker, I go out and help businesses do well at social media and get the most out of uh, building relationships online. All right. Awesome. I'm going to stop that screen share. Welcome to all three of you. I'm just going to dive right into some questions here, and I'll try to uh ask particular people but if somebody else wants to chime in please do of my guests um i want to start with jason jason when we talk about e-commerce it's like a word a term that we hear all the time but how do you actually define e-commerce 
So for me, it's the it's the idea of being able to take uh, your your services remotely, right? So whether you're actually selling a product or a service, it's being able to offer the ability for a uh, customer or your customer to be able to purchase said surface online um, and remotely rather than uh, in front of that individual. Okay. So um, have you, have any of you, all three of my guests, um, had people contacting you during this time about how to get things going for themselves and problems related to this sudden change? Have you no one speak at once, huh? I yeah. <laughs> We have just basically for people to uh, be able to work remotely as far as uh, when essential businesses were the only ones that were allowed to operate. And of course, uh, I've had people reach out to me as far as how to better utilize social media in order to keep their retail or service business going. Okay. I've had someone, I've had a couple people. One, I had a client that we had just launched her e-commerce website before all this happened, before the shutdown happened. So. Uh, she was just beginning to trying to build an audience. So it worked out really well because now people are actually looking online. So the timing of that was actually um, good for her. Uh, and then I had um, somebody else reach out to me who had always, uh, she's an artist and she had always gone to trade shows and art shows and community based events to sell her amazing jewelry and now she needed to move online because those uh, opportunities were never there and personally i decided i'm going to set up my own e-commerce website i've been doing it for other people for so many years i think i'm i've been having this idea in the back of my head so i actually started my own website because i had a little more space to do that that's awesome what do you see um pam while i'm talking with you what, what do you feel like are some of the com easiest things to do wrong when making this transition? So um, I feel like there's, there's several things you can do wrong. One, you always have to put the customer first. When, especially when we're in panic mode, we're sort of in survival mode and maybe not accessing all the parts of our brain that we should. And we're just thinking, let's just get it up. But remember, uh, whatever you're creating on this website, this is where they're experiencing your brand. So you need to make sure that you're really creating a relationship when people come to that website. Um, I th feel like other things that can be overlooked, especially when urgency is going on, is that it's really important to build in good security, a uh, good backup system, some technical pieces that aren't quite so glamorous that you don't relate to sales. I think that's really important. And um, certainly good search engine optimization can really get lost in that shuffle to get things done quickly. So you mentioned security, Jason and um, Burton, you know, I, I have, I'm setting up, as I mentioned before we started this recording, some uh, e-commerce on my own personal website. And all of a sudden I'm going, oh, people are gonna be putting credit card information in, and what does that mean for me? And how do I make sure that's secure and so on and so forth. So um, uh, let's start with Burton and then we'll go to Jason. What do you have, what advice do you have for us? Well, always you want to analyze whatever platform you're going to do uh, e-commerce on because there's a lot of different options out there. And I think the challenge with e-commerce is that people always want to jump with the, uh, well, I shouldn't say people, small businesses always want to jump in with the free and easy solution to go with, but that may, may not always be the best solution to go with. So I would always recommend small businesses to do their research and make sure that they are going to use something that's going to be safe and secure and have good support whenever uh, they're dealing with e-commerce because you don't want to set up a site that is easily hackable uh, and that will compromise your customer's information. So always research and make sure that you're using the right product. Do you have any recommendations of actual products that would make sense to us? <laughs> There's a whole ton of uh, resources out there. And the problem is with throwing one out there, um, you definitely run into the risk of um, is it going to work right for your business? So I know there's Etsy. Um, obviously, you could set up an e-commerce website with Wix. Um, there's there's web or e-commerce sites all over the gamut. So the best thing you might want to start out with an Etsy or like a Wix website. But always do your research and just make sure that it's going to be the bit best fit for the type of product that you're selling. Of course, the type of uh, I guess the type of traffic that you're going to have come on your website as well. Jason, what do you have to add to that? 
Yeah, I definitely uh, would absolutely agree with Burton. Uh, there are tons and tons out there. And I think uh, overall, I, research is incredibly important, but certainly um, in small business, obviously the, the amount of uh, money and resources to put into it is certainly you know front of mind. But uh, usually when you're looking at a free option, um, there's a lot of drawbacks uh, that end up happening with that, whether it is from a security or a functionality standpoint. So if you worked hard enough to get the customer to there, you really want to make sure that, it's, that you're going to close that. Uh, I'm sure there's not card abandonment, things of that nature, um, which is to me where you really do want to at least have a, a PAM or somebody that can help you build out the site or at least educate you on, on what it could look like. Um, because there are tiers, right? You can always step up uh, to different tiers depending on what it is that you're actually needing. Uh, but trying to stick away from a lot more of the free services because those are the ones that typically end up being breached or hacked, um, which ends up costing you as a, as a business owner. Uh, thousands and thousands of dollars that people don't really realize. So, I, I said I wasn't going to take questions, but I did see a question pop up in chat that I thought was a good one, and that is: Is PayPal safe in these situations? And maybe it's I think, not yes or no, but yeah, yeah, I think PayPal is safe. It's with any uh, web-based application, it all boils down to your password. Because to be honest, most cyber cr crime is ninety-nine percent. Uh, user error. So if you're using weak passwords for your website or for PayPal, your information is going to get hacked. So you need to use different passwords for all of your online sites, e including your e-commerce site, and to make sure that it's not easy for cyber criminals or just, you know, regular people to get into your company. That's your, that's your name and birthday as the password, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, Joe. <laughs> I see you got Joe. Oh. Or one, two, three, four. <laughs> I would suggest that from a, a PayPal standpoint, uh, it's not as popular as it once was. So to say that you must use it or, or offer that on your uh, e-commerce site, I, th I don't think that has to be the case. Most customers are still willing to pay whether it's not on PayPal or not. Also, if you, from a, a, a processing standpoint, I would say that there are, are times to use them, but traditionally more than any other company I typically come across, they have the... Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say that they typically do this, but they end up holding your money longer um, than a lot of other companies might. And it's certainly, once they do that, incredibly hard uh, to get that money or to get a hold of anybody to find out where your money is. Um, so when you're looking at different options, certainly from a smaller uh, a business perspective, Stripe being the largest um, payment processor online uh, that exists out there can be a good a good fit. I mean, I would, I would argue Heartland's a great solution as well, but it's really uh, why you do your research because it is dependent on volumes and functionalities and things that you're looking at. I see some uh, nods of affirmation on that. Pam, go ahead and chime in. I know you mentioned some Just something really quick about PayPal. Um, I recommend that if people are going to connect PayPal to their website, that they create a separate bank account for it so that the monies that go to PayPal are separate from the regular business money. And just a little plug for Heartland, they'll save you money than using, you know, overusing PayPal. So just that little plug. Thanks, Pam. Sure, Jason. Um, you mentioned, Pam, uh, things like Shopify. And uh, I, I know that term, but I really don't even know what it is. So tell me more about it. So just really quickly, I'm aware that we don't have a whole lot of time. Shopify and uh, WooCommerce, which is a Woo, uh, WordPress Shopping cart are the two most popular shopping carts online right now. And Shopify was designed for people that don't know any coding, don't know anything about websites or anything. They just need to get up an online store. So with that, like that is their foundation. They've thought about the usability for that process and they've made it super simple, but it is a software as a service type solution, which means they own that platform. So there's some downsides to that too. Um, you don't have as much control over the website if whatever they run into financial issues, they take their marbles and go home, you lost your website because they actually own it and you pay them every month to be able to use it. So there's some you know, things you have to weigh out. Uh, the WooCommerce shopping cart, which is the one that I've used on WordPress websites, it takes a little bit more of a learning curve to do it, but you, you choose your own host. If you decide you don't like that host, you can 
take your uh, website and move it someplace else. You can customize it to the nth degree, you know, like if you know you're coding or you have a relationship with a developer, you can get very specific on customization. And it has a plugin to do just about anything you'd ever want to do. Uh, in the long term, the WooCommerce uh, approach will probably save you money. Um, but that's well, just real quick. Let's talk a little bit about fees and taxes. Um, you know, when I was trying to set up uh, on my own Wix site, um, you know, the first thing I saw was, oh, was it 2.9% plus a 30 cent fee per transaction? And I'm going, all of a sudden I'm going, is that normal? I don't really know. So in your experience, what should we expect when it comes to fees? And then how do you handle taxes? Let's uh, start, Pam, since you're on my screen, I'm going to start with you if you want to speak to that. If not, pass it on. Well, certainly I'll let Jason address the fees for transaction because that is certainly his area of expertise. Um, but I can talk about shop or taxes. Um, taxes you're going to have to pay. There's something they call your sales tax nexus, which is essentially your relationship um, to that state. So you, you're considered uh, that that state is significant to you and with the state that you're operating from, you certainly have a sales tax nexus with that. So you're gonna have to abide by those state rules. But if you're selling online to other states and perhaps even cities that have specific tax rules, uh, you're gonna have to comply with that. So there's three quick things that you need to know about taxes. Uh, register for a sales tax permit in your nexus state and because it's illegal in most places to collect a tax without this permit. So you need that permit. Collect the sales tax and then report and file sales tax. But to do that, to set that up in your shopping cart, most shopping carts are set up with all those settings. So once you've got it set up, you're good to go. Jason? Yeah, I'll touch on the, the fees right quick. So they're, uh, in a nutshell, no matter, there's thousands of processing companies that basically approve or decline transactions and bring you, the business owner, your money. Um, there's fees that we all have to pay back to, if I bought something on your website with a Chase Visa card, will you, the business owner, have to pay some money back to Visa and back to Chase for the, the pleasure of accepting their card, right? So there's some of the fees that you can't really control that no matter who you're using, you got to pay. Um, the aspect that you have control over is what you're actually paying your processor. Um, so there's a, a, a pricing model. It's uh, interchange plus or wholesale. That's what we operate with, but it's not always the best fit for a business. So if you're doing lower volume and you only have a few transactions a month, that 2.9 and 30 cents is actually probably your best bet uh, from a cost standpoint. Uh, that's pretty in the e-commerce world. That's pretty standard between you know, Shopify and Square and PayPal and things of that nature, they're all pretty much usually right in line with that. Um, so it really does become a, a, a volume discussion, right? And somewhat of a, you know, if you want to be able to pick up the phone and talk to somebody about your payments or things like that, if you're willing to pay a little bit more for it, uh, that's kind of how it breaks down. Okay. Burton, anything to add to that before we move on? Oh, yeah, I'm not the tax man, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to give you the opportunity. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I'm got ready to move into the, the next section, um, but I'm, I'm going to look over my questions real quick and, and see if there was anything that I'm um, missing. Oh, what about, uh, is it necessary or not to have an app or some kind of, you know, mobile presence uh, in addition to your website presence? Because it feels like now to me, most people are making purchases on their phone more than they are on a website. So how does that work together? I'll start with that one. I think obviously if you uh, have a website, you need to have a website that is mobile friendly uh, mm -hmm. because if you've got a website that won't work well on mobile devices and obviously you're going to lose customers. And I think Pam will agree that when it comes to website design, whether it be desktop or mobile, you've got about what five to eight seconds in order to make the impression for people to stay to that site or they're gonna move on to something that's a little bit more easy to navigate. Absolutely, in fact, the, the current statistics is for every two seconds delay that they have with your page loading that you begin to lose about 4% revenue. So it is really important to have a website that is mobile responsive. Um, and also like for search engine optimization, mobile responsiveness is one of the things that they look at and Google has actually made public that that's one of the, the rankings that they give it. 
So you absolutely need to make sure that it, your website is built to respond to whatever size screen um, is, is accessing it. Um, and then like for an app, I think you only need an app uh, if there's something in particular that you're delivering to your customers, your audience, that is maybe member exclusive, special content for subscribers or something, because websites are mobile now. So pretty much everything you do, uh, and most people use their cell phones to access websites now. So an app is like a, an, another animal now. Jason, no, no, nothing to add. That, that's all. Yeah, I don't, there's only a handful of business types that I think would ever be successful with a specific app we just because you're the legwork of the build out and the pain of making it to yeah I just don't I don't think that's something that most businesses would need to worry about as much as I want to keep talking about this we've got to move on to the next segment which is innovation and how we do things differently now and in the future so first big question uh, Jason is e-commerce now assumed to be a permanent part of all business yeah, absolutely. I would say that uh, it, customers have gotten used to it. It's the expectation level. If you put off looking at technology for a long time, it's now you got to, I, I personally think. And I don't think it's just in a shopping cart functionality. It's where we see a lot of our growth right now is just in being able to make payments online, right? So if you're, uh, you take a dental office, you take anybody that's sending invoices or, or, or something of that nature, they should expect to be able to go to your website and pay for whatever said services rather than have to call in um, rather than, you know, the vet office, they're dropping your dog off. You should be able to pay ahead before you get there online. Things of that nature are just um, the expectation from safety perspective, but also a convenience. And I don't, I don't, we don't see that going away. If someone is right now just going, wow, I really am behind the ball. I've got to get started on my e-commerce. If I'll, I'll throw this out to any of you, if you could just say the, next two steps that you would say, well, then start here, what would that answer be? Talk to Pam. Yeah, that sounds like a Pam question. <laughs> yeah, it really depends on like where they're at already in their process. I mean, if they're already an existing business, I'm assuming they have a logo, they have, you know, all that, the bank accounts, they have credit cards and everything like that. So they're gonna need to choose a shopping cart. They're gonna need to decide what direction they wanna go with that. If they plan to just do this all on their own, then they're gonna to have to do their research and make their best decision. Um, or they can talk with a professional that can help guide them through that. But, and then they're gonna to want to perhaps, I think one of the, the best things that you can start doing is just working on that spreadsheet that has your product information in it. Now, however you upload that to your shopping cart will depend on, they'll have their own template for it, but just even getting that started. So uh, that's where a lot of people get hung up. It takes a little bit of time. Um, and then don't forget to set up your support pages. You're gonna need terms and conditions, shipping and returns, uh, privacy policy. You're gonna need some of those other pieces in place once you start launching online. One other thing I would add too is just as far as getting started, make sure that you don't try to fall into the trap of DIY. And I think when it comes to technology, everyone thinks that they should be able to do it. But web design and e-commerce is just a whole different animal. It's not something that you're going to immediately pick up on. So you may just have to make that investment and let a professional like Pam handle it. And then maybe you can wean away from someone like that and do it on your own. But you heard me cursing at the computer last night, didn't you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Very late. A lot of people don't understand that it's not just a normal website you're building. It's there. There's items. There's taxes. There's things of that nature. So when you think about doing it yourself, it sounds maybe easy, but once you kind of get going, you realize there's a lot that goes into it. So kind of what Burton said, I would I would say certainly look to at least start with a professional to help build you something out. Learn how to do it yourself once it's up and running, because the the build out's certainly the the hardest aspect. It is. Burton, is there um, uh, something I can do on my own just to kind of do a security check or is that something I need to call you for? I mean, we can call you as well, I admit that, but. Yeah, when it comes to obviously your technology, you need to get with the tech expert and just make sure that all of your, you know, your computer stuff is concerned. I mean, you're storing stuff on the web or in the cloud, you need to make sure that you're in compliance with that. But as far as your website's concerned, uh, definitely your web hosting company or your web designer needs to take a look at that to make sure that all the hatches are battened down to make sure that you're not leaking customer information or credit cards out there because 
You know, cybercrime, especially in pandemics like this, it's, it's increasing. People are looking at ways to make money. And cyber criminals aren't the nerds in the basement just hanging out to cause chaos. You're, you've got actual criminals that are going online looking at different ways to exploit people. So always have a professional check every aspect of your business, whether it's uh, on location or in the cloud. You're giving me a lot to think about because I literally have been dealing with this in the last 48 hours. And so now I'm going, yeah, I think I just need to call Pam and have her work for me and, and call you all in each. <laughs> um, okay, we have just about three minutes left. So I, I want to um, just help everybody know what resources that they can that are available to them. I'm going to sc uh, screen share again here. And um, I want to start by showing our viewers Casey Bizcare, because many of you are, I've had some personal reach out about taxes, fees, local, city, state. Well, the Casey Bizcare exists. It's a city office that exists to help you get legal within the city of Kansas City. And they can also work beyond the city of Kansas City or statewide, but they'll, they, they will help you free of charge um, to walk through some of the um, legalities. Joel, sure I, can't, I can't see your screen. Oh. Your fair screen. Thank you. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's, okay. Because I the you. final button. There we go. Casey Bizcare. And uh, I would encourage you to look into Casey Bizcare and get some help from them. And then, of course, your Missouri Small Business Development Center. You can always reach out to um, consultants there. It's free of charge, and we will work with you. And then I want to thank our partner, Casey Sourcelink, um, who is partnered with us on Better Together Tuesdays. Casey Sourcelink. I tell people all the time that Kansas City is one of the best places in the nation to start a new business because there's over 200 organizations that are dedicated to entrepreneurship in some form. Well, you don't have to go looking for all of those 200 organizations. That's why KC SourceLink exists, to help you get connected to the resources that are already there. So I encourage you to explore KC SourceLink. I want to remind everybody, um, we have Burton Kelso with us today and Integral is his business and he can help you make sure you're secure um, subscribe to his uh, newsletter. I think Burton does one of the best newsletters of anybody that I subscribe to. Um, really great job. Thank you, And Joe. then, yes. And then, um, of course, Pam Hausner with Big Vision Design. Pam has done a lot of work. She's been involved with the center and taught classes, and she's just a great person. I have referred so many people to Pam and said, you need to call Pam because I, I appreciate the work she does. I've referred people to Burton. And I just have met Jason recently, but he came highly recommended. And so I want to encourage you too, when you're thinking about taking payments and getting e-commerce set up, this is a, a company that you can get connected with to make sure you're doing it right. So you don't have things falling through the cracks. The last thing any one of us wants is to uh, be in that position, that awkward position. So thank you to my guests for being here today. Thank you to each of you who attended. This will go up on YouTube and uh, not in the near future and a library of resources. If you have more questions, feel free to email me, contact the center via our contact page. If you didn't catch everybody's website and you're like, hey, I missed that, can I get that? We will, um, I'd be happy to email all of that to you. So Burton, thanks for being here. Thanks, Joe. Jason. Happy to do it. All right, have a beautiful afternoon because we're better together Tuesdays. Thanks.